Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Lucid, and uh, we've got another turn for you. Ah, uh, we are getting ready. We've we've been eating Satis, and we're getting ready to have a, a war here with Arco. So uh, and Arithia. Um, Arithia is not going to be ready to fight. I don't think as soon as Arco is, because uh, Arithia has been. They've had the best problem you can have in a Dominions game, and that is they don't have enough siege chaff. They have been running around, taking fort after fort. Um, you know, they were vulturing, they were eating Falegra, then they went to vulturing Raga, I think, or Pangea, or both. Um, then, what, what were they doing? They were moving troops back to try to, like, maybe take some of mine land, because I was going to negotiate giving them Falegra. But then the throne rush happened. Um... <clears throat> And now they're trying to eat a bunch of Kalem stuff. Uh, oh gosh, what happened here? What happened here? So Arithia's done mass protection. They've got very high protection. They've got these crossbowmen, which have three stars, wow. Um, and are very good units. <clears throat> Inside the fort, though, we have Gifts of Heaven. Oh gosh. And these guys are kind of, they're getting zapped by the, by the wall archers. But the skeletons have successfully filled up the gate. Oh god. Trying to shoot wall archers. Wall archers have a lot of protection on the wall. I don't know, people have started running. And sleep cloud is coming out, but it looks, I don't know if that's friendly fire, because I don't think Kalem cat. oh no it is. It's this worm mage <clears throat> doing sleep cloud, doing a lot of value. And it's like he's almost about to break through. The archers have run out of arrows, but now more people are running. And now he's just got to try to push through this, which isn't going to happen. Yeah, so he had a fair, <clears throat> a fair amount of uh, of troops here, enough to siege the fort. But you can see he didn't have enough mages in position. He was just taking what he had and putting this fort under siege, and assumed there wasn't a tremendous amount inside. I don't know if he could have brought more mages or not, but um, I remember him being quite embarrassed by this defeat, being like, "Oh man, for shame." Um. This is something that happens, though. I mean, when you... Sometimes you need to be greedy and to try to take something when you're not sure if it's going to work or you don't have all the things you might need. And then sometimes this happens. It doesn't work. But, um, you know, there are things I think he could have done just with this army. Like, elementals are really good for fort storming. So you could do, like, Power of the Spheres and then Phoenix Power, and this guy all of a sudden is now, like, a Fire 3 Mage. And then you put a bunch of fire gems on them and have them spam fire elementals. Things like that, you know, they can be gem baited, so you, you might need even more fire gems, right? You need enough to do an outside and an inside the fort battle. <clears throat> um, but he has a few of these Dukados. You know, this guy could do water elementals. Um, fire elementals are very good at clearing this wall. And they're ethereal, so they can go through the wall. So fire elementals are really good. Water elementals are fine as well. Um, I don't know if, what, what does this guy have? Yeah, I think you do fire elementals with the Duke of Does. Um, the other thing, Flaming Arrows is kind of nice. He's got a lot of crossbowmen. He could try to do that. Um, uh, obviously these fire things are dangerous if you're doing mass protection, because you get the fire vulnerability, but, um, <clears throat> you know, maybe you don't do that. So... Uh, anyway, there's, you know, in hindsight, there's probably stuff you could do. But I think in general, if you don't have a lot of mages um, and you're trying to storm a fort, you should probably put a fair number of gems on those mages. Um, yeah. So we've got this fort popped now. Uh, we have stormed Patala. There was hardly anything inside that we managed to lose a Saramancer, but reclaimed his ghost orb. And, uh, yeah. The, the, bat the lines have been drawn with Arco. Uh, I don't know if we're... Sending some death gems to Ulm. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm not sure when the this next round of action is going to start. You can see, by the way, Alm has now put this throne under siege. This was the one we were talking about him beelining to, mostly to deny it from Arco, but also to deny it from me. Um, this also is going to set up kind of what his spoils would be in the Arco War, like this. And, uh, you know, some portion like this, and I think mine was going to be some portion like this. Maybe like this. So I don't know. He gets a lot. He gets most of these kind of like core lands here. Um, I don't know if we had it decided like down to the province, but we had like some very rough guidelines. Uh, he could have asked for more. I'd have given that to him as well. Um, I think his problem in asking for more is that kind of logistically it would be hard for him to get a lot more. You know, like, you know, he could have asked for this. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe that would be what he needs to do is like ask for things that would be like, this looks like it kind of should be mine because right now it neighbors two of my provinces and only one of his. And it's also above this line, like this line here, which is like, you know, but I think this would have been a reasonable ask. Anyway, um, but I can't, I can't remember the exact things. I think it was Alm gets all of this. And I think I get this. I don't know. Maybe I gave this to him too. I can't remember. We'll have to see. Uh, I could pull up the old agreements, but um, I think we're just going to speed through the turns instead. So turn 76, coming up. Okay. Uh, I got a new turn here. You can see, by the way, uh, we've got a fair amount of Curse of Blood happening. We've got one, two casts this turn. So I think we're doing two a turn. Our Blood Income... We are at uh, 1542, so that's uh, 5762, uh, let's see, 76, yeah, we're at like 90, so we're, we're not quite at two a turn, it doesn't, oh no, and then more. We're, we're getting close to two a turn, we're probably at like one and a half a turn, it looks like, maybe a bit more, I think we were more. This might have been a, a, a rather unlucky turn blood hunting. Um, one of the nice things is when you have no scales, it makes blood hunting feel like it's a little cheap. Uh, we do another conversion, convert a few more people. Okay, and so not a lot is happening. Uh, we're still doing a lot of white mage conversion. That's where actually most our death gems are going. Not into worms, but into white mages. So that's all happening. We've taken this fort. And uh, we're now officially done. We are ready to go for our next war. Um, I think I am asking Arco, what turn do we do it? I, clearly, we haven't issued attack orders yet. Uh, but we're starting to move worms into position. Uh, do we have more worms moving? There's a lot of guys here ready to go. There's a lot of guys here ready to go. Fair number of people here. I might have asked Patala if I can come eat him. Oh, I think I do. I was like, hey, Patala, can I come meet you? Patala, I can't remember why... Oh, they're frustrated with Arco because Arco had come to his aid. He and Arithia came to the aid, and Arithia is kind of, you know, a little was a rump state at the time, so it was mostly Arco. Um, came to the aid of Patala against the birds, but then get, got bought out. Um, and then made peace, and I don't think they communicated that super well with Patala. So Patala was kind of just left hanging. Maybe they did communicate it well. Either way, Patala was upset about it. Um, I think Kalem made Patala the kind of... I mean, Kalem made Arco the kind of deal that Arco couldn't refuse. It was such a generous deal in terms of just getting tons of free forts and land for what otherwise might have been a very hard fight. Um, I... While I could understand Arco not taking it because, you know, they thought there was something better to do or they are worried about Satis or, you know, whatever it was. I could understand them not taking it. Um, but I can also certainly understand them taking it. I think they got such a good deal. It's hard to be too angry with them for getting bought out at such a high price, you know. They're, they're not like a $10 betrayer. You know, they're like a $1,000 betrayer. You know, you got to get out your wallet and really pay them. So, um, anyway, uh, Patal had a bit of a chip on their shoulder about that and was like, hey, can you not attack me? Uh, I really just want to fight Arco and get some vengeance. And I was like, oh, I mean, okay. 
Uh, I would have rather, I think optimal game state for me, because I could just take these. I think optimal play would have probably been to just take them from Patala. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll let them have their fun. So, uh, it's something that I think we can afford. It's going to put us on the good graces of this player. Not that it particularly matters for this, but I don't know. I'm fine just letting it happen. Um, certainly isn't going to hurt me too much. Uh, and if things go south and he gets his armies killed, I'll just come in and vulture it probably anyway. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think taking it, like fighting them and taking their stuff would be like a small win. Um, if they manage to kill uh, Arco's stuff, that would be a small win. If they get their stuff and it gets killed, then that's probably also a small win for me because I'll come in and vulture. So, I don't know. I think they're all decent outcomes. So, I'm just happy to do whatever one they want to do. So, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, troop movement. Mm, can't really tell too much. Let's go to the next turn. Okay, we got another turn. Uh, record of creation, did we find anything? Nope. Negatory. Um... Oh, this is cool. So this is Ulm storming the last Kalem throne. Oh god. Dude, they got murked. Let's do point of view Kalem. <laughs> Alright guys, we got some really high-powered slow to recruit mages here. Everybody power up. We're gonna cast some really good spells. There's demons, use your solar rays! Yeah. They got murked. Look at these guys. Man, Fiends of Darkness are so good in darkness. 15 attack, 15 defense. Um, and then a bonus 6 attack with Bloodlust on. So good. 224 or 21 damage attacks that have bonus uh, poison. Goodbye. All right. I think this is the same throne again. He's trying to storm again. Is he successful? He's got great eagles. They're just going to jump in the back and kill everything, right? Okay. Who's foul vapor? That must be Arithia's. Is Arithia foul vaporing his own army? Who casts this? A pearl mage. But doesn't Serpent's Blessing. Strange. Okay, I mean, it worked. He, he lost a bit. But nothing he can't afford to lose, you know? Okay. So the throne is now Arithia's. Um, yeah. Damn, yeah. Where is, oh, yeah, this is our little, little sickle farm. Uh, are we moving things in yet? No, it looks like we're not attacking quite yet. I think we were kind of being patient and just letting these guys finish their wars, I think is what it actually was. Um, for two reasons. I think one, because we were just being polite, because, you know, everybody just kind of worked together to stop the bird throne rush. Um, but I think also... Um, we're not in a hurry every turn we get really strong like our army graph guys is going nuts look at this what i want you guys to appreciate there was a time and for you it wasn't very long ago because you know i've been speeding through these recordings and so like things kind of feel compressed but you remember way back when when we turned on our unit production and we were like oh man uh we you know it went down for a bit because we uh <clears throat> I think we got a fair number of units killed off or whatever. Um, but then it popped back up, right? And this was the first turn. At the time, our graph went like this. It was like, gadoom, gadoom, right? Um, yeah, so this was it turning on, right? Fadoom, fadoom. And we were like, oh, that's so high. And I told you at some point we were going to make it look flat. And it really does look flat. This was us like, 
oh, dude, we've got like 40 worms a turn, da, 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 you know, and oh, we got more. It inflected up a major bit. Like at the time, it was like we went from like this to like this, you know, we're like, oh, it's inflecting up. Yeah, we're making all that look flat. We really are. Um, yeah, the scaling is pretty intense. We're at, we're at pretty huge production. So we're fine the longer people want to take. I think objectively it would be a... We're also catching up a bit on research. Um, like it would be nice to have things like Master and Slave and Undead Mastery stuff that we can do. Not that we need it, but, you know. Anyway, they're all done research. Um... I think it would still be optimal for me to fight while they're still trying to finish off Kalem. But I don't need... I can afford to be polite, so I will. We'll just we'll just wait and, you know, let them... We'll do our fighting when everybody's ready. Um, I don't see a lot of Erythian stuff on the border. We are moving a lot of troops. We got a ton of troops in Flegra. Yeah, I've got a good number of troops over here. When we went through the reanimators the other day, I forgot, I remembered now that I forgot to mention we had, you know, another 20-something in Bogarus. Um, That's another important thing, too, is, like, if I lose... I think this is an important thing, because people... It's easy to get caught up in the total number of worms that are getting produced every turn. And be like, oh, you lost 400 worms. Like, you'll just make 400 more. Yeah, but it takes me a while to get them to places, right? So, like, if I lose 400 worms here near my worm production center, yeah, I replace them right away. If I lose 400 worms up here, right, like near the Patala region, or, and the, like I, I have about like 1,200 worms in this region. If they kill 1,200 worms in this region, it is hard for me to get them back out. You know, like I don't have a ton, I haven't owned this land for long. I don't have a lot of mages up here. I could move some, you know, but that takes a while. And then, you know, these worms are map move one. It is a long-ass walk uh, to get over there. So I could gateway, you know, but that basically is going to now be using my god turns. Uh, I might have a Saramancer that could do it too. But anyway, point is, is that uh, an important, I think, element to this, rather than getting too focused on just the number of worms that are getting produced, is like some areas of my empire, and this is... Uh, way more obvious to me than it would be to other players in the game unless they're really five-head thinking about this. Um, some, <coughs> some areas on the map are way harder for me to reinforce, such that if I suffer major losses, I either can no longer make progress in that portion of the map, or I'm going to uh, like lose progress and have to start shedding forts. So that's really important. If Arco could win, like, two major battles in this Patala region, he's basically going to be given Patala. Um, it might be three battles, right? But if he can do that, he's basically going to win Patala, and I'm not going to be able to reinforce it for a good long while. I will probably have to make a hold at this fort and then at Bogarus. Uh, like, I'm going to get pushed back a lot. Like, if he wins three major battles here and takes, like, these armies off the table... Like, yeah, I may have a ton of... I might be able to replace those losses in general. But getting them and all the mages back up here, I won't be able to do it in time without losing major forces. Um, now, that's me saying that at a big picture level. Um, at a lower picture level, uh, I would be trying everything I can do every turn to, to limit my losses or stop them. So, you know, we would be trying to do crazy things to, to, to keep that from happening. But I think in a big picture, it probably would. Um, also cool, I just saw this guy. We do have the Ark. This is really good if you are running like a sacred-only strat, which we kind of are. So um, it basically is going to do damage to all non-sacred, all non-friendly sacred. So it will also hurt enemy sacreds on the field. So this is a really strong spell. Um, I think, it, yeah, it says here. Um... <clears throat> They make an MR check. They take some damage. They can also get blinded and diseased. Uh, I think Indiana Jones opening the Ark of the Covenant. That's basically what happens. Um, so anyway, that's a cool artifact we're looking forward to using. I don't really hardly ever use it because I normally have army comps that have a lot of non-sacred stuff in it. Um, it's been a while since I've run like a real sacred-only strat like this. 
So uh, anyway, on this particular nation, it's really nice. Uh, okay. So I think that's it. Let's go ahead and go to the next turn. All right, we've got turn 78 here. A message from Arethia. We did it. All the infamous LA cold nations are finally dead. It's time for the desert rumble between the giant undefeated undead snakes and the mermen who left the Tritons so they could marry their sisters. <laughs> the Tritons so they could marry their sisters. That's funny. Uh, you'll be receiving this turn 78, um, which is the first turn to prepare for our nap three countdown. Maybe we did remake naps. I don't really remember that. Um, turn 79 is the second turn to prepare. Turn 80 is the third turn when attack orders get put in, and turn 81 is when the fun begins. Okay. Um, maybe I ma remade a nap with Arithia, but we didn't with Arco. I don't even remember, but I'm happy to do whatever terms they want to do. I don't, I don't need to pick nits about it. Um, I mean, I'm generally happy to... That's one of the things that I've changed a lot as I've played the game, is like, I used to be way more particular about the terms of ticking down and this, that, and the other. Now I kind of don't really care that much. It's it's way more important to just be friendly with people than to have it end on exactly whatever turn that they want. So like, I'm like, hey, the nap wins here and we tick down here. And they're like, I do think it's important to be clear about it. You know, like, um, yeah. I think it's important to be clear so that people don't get butthurt when it actually happens. Um, and then some people have, like, extreme definitions of a nap countdown, like, I got it this turn, and that means next turn it starts, and then it's, you know, so I got it on, like, you sent it on turn 79, I got it on turn 80, uh, so the nap starts ticking down on turn 81, and so then, um, turn 82, it's only a nap 2, and then turn 83, it's only a nap 3, um, and then turn 84... You get to start sending attack orders, and then turn 85, the attack orders land. It's like, dude, it's a nap 3. It's not like a nap 6, you know? Um, which actually, strangely enough, is I think a little bit how Illwinter has coded it into the, the single-player diplomacy. So maybe they're weighing in against me here. But um, no, I think three turns is plenty enough warning. I don't think it needs to be like six turns of warning and preparation. Uh, anyhow, uh, it big picture isn't talking about naps what i'm actually saying is against that what i'm saying is like for now if, if people like it starts you know turn 80 or it starts turn 81 i don't really care I, I let's just agree on a turn and have the fun then and do the fights um and that way it's a lot easier to you know people also appreciate it when you're you're generous like that with your understanding of terms um and if people uh, appreciate it then they're more fun to play with so uh, i think that's important to me having fun and other people having fun where it's possible, even if you're fighting. Um, so anyway, but Arithia with a very good nap ending message to us. Uh, this also is really good to do explaining exactly the turns things are, are happening. Um, and that way, if there is a disagreement, you can at least cordially talk about it, but I'm fine. I, I don't even know if, like I said, I don't think we had a nap. I think Arithia just sent this to me. I was like, okay. Um, may, maybe I'm totally misremembering that though. Uh, oh goodness. Oh goodness, I think I know what this is. It's happened. It's happened. Arcane Nexus is up. Hold on to your butts. So that is, at long last, the thing we knew would happen has finally happened, and this is a joint cast Nexus between Arithia and Arco. That's exciting. That's exciting. Now, we've been preparing for this. You can see we've been banking up a lot of gems. Uh, we have very good gem income, so we bank it up reasonably quickly. Um, where's our god? Our god is researching this turn. Um, there's no point because we're going to be alchemize everything. We're going to be alchemizing everything into pearls to cast. There's no point in casting Wish anymore for gems. We're not profiting from it. We're just, you know, having more gem flexibility. Um, so anyway, there's no point doing that. I'm just going to have our god chill for a turn. Ulm is going to be sending me this turn a boatload of gems. We are both going to alchemize most of everything we have and try to overcast them. Um, 
Now, if we weren't prepared, there's no way we could, like, in a couple turns, just, like, overcast a dual-casted Nexus by Arco and Arithia. It just wouldn't be able to happen. But we've been preparing for many turns now. <laughs> Maybe not as much as we should, but we've been preparing a lot. Um, and furthermore, we also kind of mathed out, like, what path Arco might have on their god. And uh, I think we're going to be significantly higher here. We're going to be up at Astro 11. So we're going to try to do uh, an 1100 cast of Nexus, I believe. Um, and that should be enough to hopefully keep it up for the rest of the game. Because the thing is, is we're also not spending anything this turn, or not much. Um, so they're not going to get hardly any gem income. And then when we do overcast Nexus, they will have not gotten much. They will It will have not nearly paid for itself. So for us, it's like a double win because they've lost the amount they put into Nexus and then we've also got the benefit of Nexus. So, um, yeah. That's that. Um, we might still have tarts going. I think tarts might be the only thing we kept running. No, we even turned tarts off. Uh, we did a ghost, a ghost rider's the only thing we did. Uh, and that's just to keep this system going. This was actually... Oh, man, let's watch this. This is Ghost Riders and Lesser Horror. But this is finally a good conversion. Yeah, 35. Very nice. Um, yeah. So uh, that that's going to be fun. Let's go ahead and get into it. Let's go to turn 79. Okay, turn 79, and uh, you can see a tremendous uh, amount came in. Alm sent them as uh, separate gem types, and that was so that if for whatever reason we needed to, like, reimburse him, you know, like, we weren't going to convert all of them, or um, whatchamacallit, I don't, you know, I, I don't remember exactly, but if for any reason we needed to undo the transaction... Uh, it would be a lot easier to undo. Once you alchemize them, they're alchemized for forever. So um, he sent me as the base types, and then I alchemized them. Um, so look at look at how many pearls. We're at one right now, and then... Yeah. I forgot. We actually had a robe of the Magi, too. Um, so we got up to Astral 12. Highly unlikely that... Uh, because I also was a lot higher... I have a lot higher astral than anybody else, I think. Um, you know, Arco, their god, was not high astral. It was a mother of monsters with uh, nature and death and blood. And then the second path it got was air. So it could still magic phase. We were like the the Arnold and uh, was it Reggie. I, God, I can't remember the other guy. Um, but, you know, like the, the handshake thing. Or the, the arm thing, you know, it was like the two mother of monsters going at it. Uh, so we were like cloud trapezing, teleporting on top of poor Marignan earlier in the game. I was doing it with teleport, he was doing it with cloud trapeze. So he doesn't have like a high astral god. <coughs> he was probably using like an, a an astral four, barely getting it up to, you know, astral eight or nine or whatever to cast it. So... Uh, I, we are very confident that this is going to overcast because nobody else can even have a caster this high. And an Astral 12 cast is huge. I mean, guys, this is an enormous cast with an enormous investment from Ulm and I. And we're doing it for several reasons. One is because a Nexus-fueled, like I've been talking about, a Nexus-fueled uh, water pearl alchemy thing is very scary. Uh, it's just going to be a crazy amount of gem income. It's going to mean, in short, I mean, they already kind of do own all the globals, but they'll own all the globals with like way more cancerous stuff. Like they don't need these gem gen globals anymore. Once they have Nexus, they'll keep them up for a while, but you know, at some point they'll put something else in. They're certainly going to overcast gift of health. Um, now they're planning on fighting me. Um, but you know, who knows what, think of any cancer global they can put up and they probably got it in the works. Um, and then, you know, like Gift of Nature's Bounty, there's going to be a lot of stuff if if left to their own devices. So, uh, yeah, anyway, 
Uh, we're probably gonna... Oh, yeah, the Robe of the Magi was from Ulm, too. I, I think I had been thinking about how to forge it, and I think I'll be able to forge it later. Like, my god can actually forge it, because uh, my god's, like, blood 12 and air 4. So, all we need is, like, the Tomb of High Power on my god, and it would be able to forge it with this gear, or I'd have to empower it once. <clears throat> we're gonna make it later, but... So, this is exciting. I mean, it's not often that you, uh, you do a a Nexus cast and get to sit here and you're like, eh. I I'll let you guys enjoy this with me. This is what it's like. <laughs> whale, whale gaming in dominions, just getting out that wallet and watching your money just burn so that you can have a spell. Look at this. It takes a while. It actually does. There's no fast way to do this that I know of. But it's sort of satisfying. There we go. One pro left for good measure. Um, Oh, this is kind of cool. So this is an Arco battle against Kalem in Kalem. So this is storming Kalem's cap. So we can get a sense. This also is important for us to be able to see some battles like this. Um, just because it's going to give us a sense of what we're going to have to fight when we fight Arco. So we've got a few Archdevils. Uh, we've got a Tart here. Which looks like it's uh, primarily an Astral Mage. I mean, a, a Nature Mage. A, um, a suspicious lack of mages otherwise. We've got, uh, looks like, five or six Wraith Lords. And we've got a few of the Orphic Mystics here. But we don't have, like, what you would consider a very classic, like, large bunch of mages that you would normally see with Arco. Um, there's also a lot of Vine Ogres. Um, these are really nice. They have some weaknesses, mostly their magic resistance. Um, but otherwise, they're like very resistant to flames from the sky and things like that. They make kind of great bulk siege chaff, or great bulk chaff in general, you know? Once you get mass region on these guys and a protection buff, they're very tanky. Um, they're also mindless, so things like Soul Slay that would normally target MR don't work on them. All right, the Eagles jump to the back. There's a lot of pair of Seraphs in here, actually. The Devil jumps back here. Just thugging these guys. Does he have reanimator? It looks like he does. No, he doesn't. Him jumping to the back I, I actually might have been key for this victory because, uh, as you remember with the Arithia battle, the Skelly Spam clogged up the gate. But I think Skelly Spam does attack um, closest. Like, look, look at these guys. They're standing here. They're not running. Oh, no, they are running forward. Oh, they're all casting Disintegrate. They're all casting different. I don't know exactly what. Maybe they're targeting these guys with Disintegrate. Yeah, they are. Okay. But they're not casting Skeletons, which is what's important. And that keeps the gate from getting clogged up. Um, they were casting things at the Archdevil, too. But yeah, without the gate getting clogged up... Arca just marches right through. Hardly loses anything. There was a Sybil here. This is a cap-only mage. We missed seeing that, but it died. Um, he loses 200 dudes, but some of it was really high. Eagles are really high value, so those are painful losses. Some of it was things that don't matter at all, like soulless and thralls. That was the, kind of the bulk of the losses. Um, but he lost some Vine Ogres and some uh, Ajima champions. Ajima. Ajima. Um... Anyway, Kalem lost a tremendous number of mages, so uh, pretty well done. I think Kalem's kind of done scripting his armies, too, at this point. Um, but yeah, that's basically the end of Kalem now. So Arco's on their cap, going to be coming down here and taking this. Um, wait, are we attacking Arco this turn? We are. So yeah, Arco and I don't have a nap, I don't think. Um, so what we're doing, they have this throne, which doesn't appear to be defended. We're going to find out if it is. We're going to be moving all these guys onto it. And, um, 
We're gonna just be doing some poking and prodding, various things, see what's here as we just kind of slow cook, start up this war. Um, <clears throat> it's also possible Arco and I did have a nap and we discussed it in Discord and agreed what turn it was ticking down or something. I, I don't remember. I don't, yeah, I don't remember ever signing a nap again with Arco, but maybe we did. I probably, this is the problem recording it like many months after the fact, you forget a lot of the details, or at least I do. My, uh, my elephant type brain. Um, yeah. Okay. So I think that's it. We'll, we'll pick up, uh, next episode. I think this is a good breaking point because next episode, so this episode was like the, the Nexus Wars where we're casting Nexus. They cast Nexus. We're going to cast Nexus. And this next episode is going to be the, well, basically our war with Arco starting, but it's not going to be just Arco. It's going to be Arithia. Um, and then Ulm's going to be chipping in as well against Darko. So uh, we'll see you guys then. Until then, take care.